In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to property, plant, and equipment. First question, depreciation method that allocates depreciation using a constant depreciation rate times the asset's book value. A, uh, accelerated depreciation. B, declining balance depreciation. C, straight line depreciation. D, Units of production depreciation or E, modified uh, accelerated cost recovery system. So if we read through this again, depreciation method that allocates depreciation using a constant depreciation rate times the asset's book value. So that's a bit more, obviously it sounds a bit more compli complicated of a method. We typically, the first method we would think of is probably the straight line method. And this sounds like it's a little bit more confusing than that, not just the straight line. So it doesn't look like it's C. I'm probably going to say C is not the correct answer. A says accelerated depreciation. That could be the correct answer. B says declining balance method. Now the thing about those two is that um, uh, the declining balance method is a form of accelerated method. So it's possible um, that uh, the declining balance method is more specific than the, the accelerated method. So I'll keep those both for now. D says units of production depreciation. Now there's nothing in this, this uh, calculation method that talks about units being involved. So I don't think it's going to be anything with the units of production. And then E says modified accelerated cost recovery system. And that has to do with the tax code. So that's a tax code depreciation. So we might think that it, it's that, but it's actually, that's, that's not going to be it as well. And unless we're talking about uh, a tax code type problem, the modified accelerated might be something that's thrown in there for financial accounting, but probably not going to be the correct answer for most of it if we're focusing on financial accounting and not the tax code. So we're left with A and B. Once again, depreciation method that allocates depreciation using a constant depreciation rate times the asset's book value, either A, accelerated depreciation, or B, declining balance depreciation. And the answer is actually going to be B here, that being more specific. These are, this B is a form of accelerated method, but it's more specific being what we're using here, the declining balance method to uh, record its, uh, the book value times a particular rate in order to get the depreciation per year. So the answer one more time, depreciation method that allocates depreciation using a constant depreciation rate times the assets book value B declining balance depreciation. Next question. An asset disposal can include all except A. Discarding the asset B. Selling the asset C. Exchanging the asset D. Donating the asset to charity or E. Holding the asset after it's fully depreciated. So if we read through this again. An asset disposal can include all except A, discarding the asset. Now when we think of the disposal, we're getting rid of the asset in some way. So we can do that by discarding it. We can just uh, get rid of it. So that seems correct. So it's not the answer. C, uh, B says selling it. And we could sell it at the end. That would be a way to discard it. Either for, you know, maybe just for scrap even to sell it at the end of its useful life. And then C says exchange the asset which is really just another form of sale. So we could exchange it for something else and that would be kind of like a sale. We could donate it to charity. That'd be a way to discard the asset. And then E says, so it should be E, holding the asset after it is fully depreciated. Now, if we just hold on to the asset when it's still fully depreciated, it doesn't mean because it's fully depreciated that it doesn't have value still. Meaning we may have fully depreciated it. It may have a book value of zero on the books, although, it's still useful to us and we're still using it. What that means is that our estimate of depreciation was not exactly correct because it still has a useful life past uh, when it's been fully depreciated, but we can't keep on depreciating it past you know zero, so it's been fully depreciated. So it is possible for us to have uh, assets still in use or that we're still holding on to that we have not yet discarded even though they are fully depreciated. So the answer then, an asset disposal can include all except holding the asset after it is fully depreciated.
Next question. The cost of land does not include A. Purchase price B. Government assessment costs C. Cost of removing existing building D. Title fees E. Cost of a parking lot So once again, if we go through this, we're going to say the cost of land does not include A. The purchase price and obviously that's going to be part of the cost of land, the purchase price. B says the government assessment costs. And that could be a cost in the, in the land. So, uh, so let's leave that for now. C says costs removing existing building. Now this is the one you want to keep in mind all the time. If we buy the land and we buy it in order to build a new building on it, for example, and there's already an existing structure on the land, because it's not something that we bought the land for, the building not being part of something that we want, something that we actually have to tear down in order to get the land to be useful to us, it will be included in the cost of land, not included in something separate like a cost of building. So be careful with that one. That one comes up a lot on, on questions. Uh, D says title fees. Uh, we actually will include any, any title fees related to the land, to the cost of the land, and then the cost of a parking lot. Now, a parking lot uh, is probably going to be an improvement. If we plan on keeping the parking lot, it's probably going to be separately recorded because we need to depreciate the parking lot, possibly. So, uh, it, it, I would think that E might be something separate. So, if we go through this B and E, the cost of land does not include either B, government assessment costs, or E, cost of the parking lot. Now, if the assessments were, were part of the purchasing process in order to be able to purchase the land, I would think that would still be part of the cost of the land. And the parking lot then would be something that would be uh, different and there need to be depreciated. It would go down in value over time. So I would think the parking lot would be something, if we kept it, that would be uh, different. So answer E, cost of the parking lot. Question, cost of land does not include E, cost of the parking lot.